This is something that the legislature passed almost a year ago, and the town adopted in August in a unanimous vote by the council to get into this program in an attempt to make our police force more diversified and attract some candidates. And we are absolutely thrilled that uh, James McPherson IV was the, one of the, the first candidate that could have accepted under that program, and he's going to be sworn in tonight. We know James for a long time. He actually worked for the township. His very first job was uh, behind the counter at the uh, concession stand at the community center. He then got promoted to Zamboni driver, which was a huge step for him. <laughs> he then went back to the community center as a session manager. He then came full time to the township as a housing inspector. I'm not sure if you're upwardly mobile and aggressive, you just can't hold a job. I don't know. <laughs> um, but then I'll tell you the, just a quick story, something nobody ever does. Nobody ever comes to my office on their last day of work and comes in, makes an appointment, comes in, shakes my hand and says, thank you for the opportunity to work here. He wanted to be a police officer. He had an opportunity in Plainfield. He took that opportunity, and I'm so happy he did because it's what he wanted to do. And he just came to say thank you. I'm telling you, that's the kind of young man this, that James is. And uh, when he had the opportunity to express an interest to come back to Woodbridge, he did, went through the process, uh, was interviewed, went through the tests, and then came out, and here he is tonight, ready to be sworn in as a police officer in the great township of Woodbridge. Uh, I ran into you a couple of weeks ago. You had a bunch of your Plainfield uh, fellow officers out for a little celebration. It was nice talking to all of them. They all said nice things about you and how much they're going to miss you. Uh, so I'd now like to call up James McPherson IV to be sworn in as a police officer by Mr. John Mitchell, our municipal clerk. Thomas Rainer solemnly swear you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. You will bear faith and allegiance to the same and to the government established in the United States and in this state and to the authority of the people. You will faithfully and partially and justly enforce all the laws and perform all the duties of the Office of Police Sergeant according to the best of your ability. So help you God. Thank you. Congratulations. Sergeant, 
these three, like the former three, saved somebody's life in Woodbridge Township because of their quick thinking and their training. I got this letter from, from I guess, some reading Bell's Ford, and I read it. The same thing, I was getting goosebumps as I read what happened. Do you think you want to say anything? <laughs> I know you don't want it, but this is a great order. <laughs> Uh, we just heard someone screaming, you know, I saw it was a little flashlight from the fence, and just went out there because I wouldn't do my job, but anyone should be doing that. And he's too, he was too nervous? Yeah, he couldn't swim at all. <laughs> so he wasn't an easy person to just get a hold of? At first he was okay, then halfway through, so I got water in his mouth, and that's my sore pants came. So I said, you guys stay calm, that's it. Safe to say, if you weren't, if three of you weren't there, he would have fallen off the fence and drank yes. Wow. I know you're going to do well with the squads. Good luck. Gentlemen, lady, outstanding. But this is not uncommon to see this happening at council meetings for the mayor to be giving these type of proclamations. Um, great job. Uh, generally, I don't speak, and I'm not going to address the new hire or the sergeant. They, they all know how we feel about them during their interviews. But uh, we put a premium on first aid in the police department, uh, so much so that we send officers for EMT training. And Vanco, he just finished his EMT training. So they're very comfortable going to these calls. But the, if you think about that six-week-old baby, the most amazing thing is is putting that, aid, that pediatric AD, AD pad on that baby and delivering that shot. It was amazing. And with this guy here, if you know the history of Woodbridge, where Belfort is, isn't far from where we lost uh, Officer Alvin Williams. You know, he, uh, he drowned over by the Home Depot parking lot. So that water rises quickly and is very treacherous. So amazing job to all of you and the first aiders too. Congratulations. who's presiding over his last meeting tonight of the year uh, is a former Brookings police officer, Brian Small. Would you like to say a few words? Sure. I just want to congratulate everybody. Uh, great job, guys and girl. I mean, being a first aider, being a police officer, I know what it's like. And it's very rewarding when you, when you save a life. The sergeants, congratulations. Uh, I had the opportunity to work with both of them gentlemen. Uh, my first encounter with Tom Ringer was um, I went from afternoon squad to day squad. He was already on the squad. I said, hey, do you drive car seven? He goes, yeah, why? I said, I'm coming to your squad. It's my car. Find a new one. He <laughs> 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 was real receptive. He took car eight. But it was so good. Santiago, I know, a little bit of time. Two great appointments. The best of luck. And to James, good luck. Vice President Howie Bauer, who covers Sports Hope One case being the second warden, who with any luck will be the council president in 2022. And then to his left, former council president and councilwoman at large Lisbeth Jesus, and to her left, fifth ward councilwoman Debbie Mead. So thank you all for being here tonight. And once again, congratulations to the new officers, congratulations to James. Thank you to all the police officers. Um, we say all the time this is the best police department in the state of New Jersey, and every day these men and women go out and prove it. Thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome to Woodbridge, the best town around. My name is John McCormick. I'm the mayor of this great town. We're here tonight to recognize uh, two different groups of people. I'll do the shorts one first, which is just uh, uh, two people from the DeLuca Family Charitable Trust. And let me read this proclamation so you'll know why we're 
Uh, we're calling up Tom, Tom and Annette DeLuca. Could you, would you mind coming up? On behalf of the DeLuca Family Charity Trust, the George Michael and Estelle DeLuca Family Charity Trust serves to advance the mission of philanthropy and charitable giving in support of Woodbridge Township-based charitable organizations, associations, and entities to include We Feed Woodbridge, the Woodbridge Township Animal Shelter and Pet Adoption Center, the Woodbridge Township First Response Community, Fire, First Aid, and Police, educational institutions of higher learning, and community disaster victims. And whereas the George Michael and Estelle DeLuca Family Charity Trust and the Woodbridge Community Charity Fund partner to advance the welfare of the entire Woodbridge Township community. So for the past more than a year, right, two years or so, I've, I've been getting these emails from Annette DeLuca and it, every time there's something going on, when we, the pandemic started, we started focusing on food. She'd email me and say, I'd like to make a donation. When the fire happened, she emailed me and said she'd like to make a donation. When the flood happened, she sent me an email. Every time we're like, we're like pen pals. Um, every month or so, it seems like you're sending us an email, sending me an email, and I can just look at all these different donations, 2,500, 2,500, 5,000, 5,000, you name it. We feed, fire, flood, you name it. Um, they're not accepting this on their behalf. They're accepting this as the executors of the family trust. And I didn't realize I knew Tom until I saw him, but from the American Legion. So, I, you know, when you're in this position, you know faces, you don't always know names, so I didn't know Tom DeLuca was this guy here who I've seen in all the parades and all the different events. So I would like to present you uh, on behalf of the trust with this proclamation, and thank you for always thinking about Woodbridge when you make your donations. It's just terrific that you're keeping it close to home and helping the people in Woodbridge who need the help. So thank you very much. Just again, as the mayor said, it's, you know, it's our honor to try and help out the people of our town. And um, when you can do it, you do it. People need it, so we try and help out. And again, it's not me, it's not Annette, it's my family trust. It's the honor of my, um, my deceased brother, father, and mother. So we do what we can to help out. It's an honor. Annette, would you mind coming up for the picture, please? Okay, our next and last proclamation is for excellence in community service presented to Meals on Wheels and Bob Wynn. Come on up, Bob, if you don't mind. So Bob is somebody who has toiled in relative anonymity for many, many years in Woodbridge Township. And it really wasn't until the pandemic started that we actually got to know each other because uh, Bob lost, and I'll let you explain it in a minute, but a third or more of your drivers and volunteers because people were naturally afraid to go out. They were afraid to go up to homes of strangers. They were afraid to interact with people. Uh, so it became a bit of a crisis uh, for Bob, and he talked to us, and we put a, an ad out through social media and our pages and our website and all that. And I guess you got a few that came in, so you're, you're, just, you're strong now. And uh, I really didn't know Bob. He, like I said, he toiled anonymously, uh, was doing a terrific job, and not many people know it. I know Meals on Wheels because my father used to do it into his 80s. He'd drive around and drop off food. And now my sister's here. She does it, uh, and her husband does it. So I hear all about, you know, about it. And now that I know Bob, I see him everywhere. 
I probably saw him everywhere for 12 years and didn't know who the heck he was because he never said hello to me. I'm kidding, I'm kidding about that. But so now, now every time I run into him, we talk about everything and I just have come to really know him and like him for what he has done for the people in Woodbridge Township who need it the most. Not everybody can get out to a food pantry. Not everybody can get out to a soup kitchen. There's an awful lot of people that are homebound and we deal with them through our Office on Aging, and I guess you get a lot of contacts you share with all that, which is terrific. Michelle Morgan's group is absolutely fantastic. So I want to present this proclamation to you and just read it really quick. <clears throat> Whereas the Meals on Wheels Association of America supports a national network of more than 5,000 senior nutrition programs supported by a dedicated army of 2 million volunteers delivering a nutritious meal, a warm smile, and a safety check that helps keep 2.5 million seniors healthy safe and living independent in their own homes each year, and whereas the Meals on Wheels team distributed over 60,000 meals throughout Metuchen, Edison, and Woodbridge during the pandemic, and whereas the success of Meals on Wheels would not be possible without the dedicated work of Director Bob Wynn and the team of volunteers and community assistants who serve Meals on Wheels to Woodbridge Township senior residents each and every day. We hereby congratulate, honor, and salute Bob Wynn and the Meals on Wheels team and extend best wishes and safe passage in the future. Thank you very much, Bob. <laughs> now, if you, uh, you mind, I want you to, to uh, complement what I said and give some more details. While you're at it, you got the cameras and you got the, the uh, film here to do a commercial for how people can help you in the future and send volunteers to take it away. Well, we can always use volunteers, and I can be reached at 634. 4141, 732-634-4141. But Meals on Wheels would be nowhere without you folks there. I mean, you folks do it all. I, I, me, Julie, and Rita, we, we're the staff, we do some work behind the scenes, but you guys are the ones that made it happen. Especially, there's, there's some people that, like Larry, who goes out an awful lot, uh, Camille, board member, board member, Marie, my wife, she helped me with all the, a lot of the bookkeeping, so I wouldn't be able to do anything without her. And Marianne Vasquez, who helps out in the um, in the cafeteria of JFK, without the dedicated dedication of Julie Harrison and Rita Kane, and the board members and all of you volunteers that go out multiple times every month, we wouldn't be able to do it without you. So, this is really for all of you. And <laughs> from the 5th Ward of Colonia is the councilwoman. Lizbeth De Jesus is a councilwoman at large. Howie Bauer is the councilman from Ford's Hope Lawn and Casby. And Vera Patel is the councilman from Island and Menlo Park Terrace. So when you call your names, just come up. <laughs> take the certificate slide to the left, and we'll take a group picture. Maria Ortiz. Bob Golden. Gladys Blanks. Gloria Brown. Up here. Congratulations, Bobby. Gladys Blanks. Sam Brown. Larry Caggiano. Take time off of bowling to <laughs> deliver some meals. Dandy Arce. Kathy DeMonte. 
Marilyn Deschamps. Congratulations, Danny. Thanks, Bill. Judy Duffy. Kathy Feely. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kathy, thank you. All right. Marion Felix. Paula Fumaro. Julie Harrison. Marie Holmes. Marguerite Johnson. Congratulations. Thank you. Paul Kachuba. Thank you. Rhea Kane. Thank you. Thomas Ketchison. Janine Larson. How does that work? Well, somebody doesn't. Ah, uh, oh, here's the stat. Now we find out there's a little bit of a fringe benefit here. Every now and then you get a free meal if someone's not home. Right. They go to a doctor and you eat for free. Yeah. All right, all right. How's the food? How's the food? Should I ask? Yeah, no, it's good. It's good? All right, all right. That's how I know. All right. Jeanine Larson? Howie Lasky? Susan Lasky. Lasky. Congratulations. Thank you. Lloyd Leventhal, thank you. Here you go, here you go. Don't leave me hanging. Uh, David Lieberfarb. Luan Loman De Chico. Bob Matus, Mats. Yep. Cindy Matus. Thanks, pal. Anne Marie Regan. The artist formerly known as Anne Marie McCormick before she got married. Congratulations. Uh, John Regan, the guy who took her off our hands. <laughs> Tammy Sharkey. Pal, well, thanks, pal. You're meeting now for the first time? That's cool. So they just showed up. Many of these you haven't met? That's great. I'm sorry, Tammy Sharkey. There you go. Carolyn Stockle. Jake from State Farm, Stockholm. <laughs> Jake is a reg this way. Jake is a regular with the Avenel Presbyterian Church Food Pantry. He doesn't even live in Woodbridge Township. He lives in Linden, but he's a staple there. Broadway. If it's not in Woodbridge, what's the difference? <laughs> but he's just a wonderful volunteer with the church. We've been seeing each other for 15 years. Every time we do a food pantry event, Jake is there. Patricia Thiel. Marianne Vasquez. Congratulations, thank you. Joe Volpe. Thanks, pal. Uh, Stephanie Volpe. Nice father, a father daughter combination. Barbara Weisenberger. Camille White Carroll. Thank you. Oops. Bob Wynn. You got, you got a permanent one, yeah. Jeff Zerpolo. Ray Zerpolo, don't see them. Uh, Susan Doherty. All right, we're also joined by Councilman Greg Vicara, Councilman Large Snow. Allegiance and a moment of silence for our men and women serving in our military. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Notice requirements in the open public meeting will have been satisfied concerning this meeting. The Home District Review and the Star Ledger published a notice on December 18, 2020, posted on the municipal bulletin board and should be so noted in the minutes of this meeting. Councilman Spiller. Here. Councilman Facara. Here. Councilwoman Meehan. Here. Councilwoman Drum. Councilman Patel. Here. Councilman Anderson. Here. Councilwoman De Jesus. Here. Vice President Bauer. Here. And President Small. Here. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes from November 23rd, 2021? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? 
I just have it. Beginning with second reading ordinances this evening, we'll start with letter A listed before you, which is an amendment to chapter 7, the traffic ordinances of the Township of Woodbridge. And this is to designate a handicapped parking spot on Cornell Street in Avondale. That said, can I get a motion that the ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hear be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter A, letter A only. There are no comment from the public. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The order to be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Letter B is an ordinance authorizing the acquisition by purchase or eminent domain of real property located in the sea warrant section of the township block 753, lot 35. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be open? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from the <coughs> council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter B. Letter B only. Hello, Mr. President. Uh, Ken Gardner, 101 Scoter Avenue, Woodbridge. Um, is this the uh, Pirates Cove property? No, it isn't, Mr. Gardner. What? What? It's uh, another piece of property on Cliff Road. So where where is it uh, compared to Pirates Cove? It's a piece of vacant land up the street a little bit, and we have interest in it to keep it open space. It's up for sheriff's sale, and this ordinance gives us the ability to go to the sheriff's sale and bid on the property so we can take control of it and keep it open space for the residents of Seaworn. Okay. Um, is there, do we own the adjoining property? No. Okay. Um, what, what is on the property now? Vacant, I said. It's vacant, I'm sorry. And, and you're committed to keeping it as open space? Yes. It's nice to hear. Thank you. Any other questions on letter C? I'm sorry, letter B. Letter B only. Good evening, Tom Maris, Forge, New Jersey. Just to follow up to Mr. Gardner's question, um, approximately what will the cost be or what bidding, or how much are you going to allocate for the purchase of the property? And has we, it been appraised? And if so, by whom? It's not been appraised yet. Um, it all happened very quickly. We got notice of the sheriff's sale. We are authorized to bid up to 600000 I believe, for it. I don't think we will, but that's we just put in that number to give us cover. Okay. And it has nothing to do with the... Um, other properties, Pirates Cove. I think on that, I read that's going to be heard tomorrow night, uh, I believe, for the planning board. Oh, I don't know about that, but okay. the piece, the, this piece is well up Cliff Road from that. It's kind of right across from the church at the triangle. If you know the Seaworn area, there's yes. a triangle. You can see a very vacant piece of land there with just some poles stored on it. That's what we're looking at. Good. We certainly need some more open space. So thank you. Uh, John Retire Woodbridge. Same subject. Mayor, uh, you did say uh, the price would be a small piece of property, six hundred some thousand dollars. No, I didn't. No. I said we're authorized to bid up to that amount. You're authorized to bid on it. Well, that's a big, a big chunk of money. And you say you want to keep it as open space? Yes. Are you sure something's not going, you don't want to develop it? Sorry? You don't want to develop it? No. No. Well, thank you. Any other comments on letter B? Here are no other comments. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it. Letter C is an ordinance of, of the council adopting the West Kelly Street redevelopment plan. Can I get a motion that this ordinance be taken up on second and third reading and the public hearing be opened? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it. The public hearing is now open on letter C. Letter C only. There are no comment from the public. Can I get a motion that the public hearing be closed? The ordinance be adopted and submitted to the mayor for approval as required by law. Motion. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Mr. President, you have 73 resolutions listed before you for action. If I get a motion by consent. Motion. Second. Questions? Any comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Mitch. We now go to the open public session of our meeting. You have five <coughs> minutes to speak. Please speak. Uh, your ad name and address. We do have a decorum. You will only speak for five minutes up at the microphone. Please do not come back to your seat and shout out. If so, I'll ask you to. 
please leave the meeting. If you refuse to leave, we'll have the police officer escort you out. Thank you. Well, Merry Christmas, Mr. President. I hope uh, not to be thrown out before then. Ken Gardner, uh, 101 Scoter Avenue, uh, Woodbridge. Um, we were talking last meeting about uh, the tax abatements and uh, as it was related to the fire district. And the mayor was uh, going through explaining how uh, the fire district, the school district, everybody submits their, their budget. Um, in our fire district this year, we also had a, uh, a special question for a $9 million bond issue um, to purchase uh, a building and, and some space. Uh, I would ask uh, for uh, that, that money to be included with so, some of this money that we're getting from uh, all, all these pilots. Uh, specifically, there was about a million dollars in there for a new truck. I would suggest that the town um, take the money out of the pilot program, uh, and, or the money that comes from the pilot program, I should say, to pay for, uh, for the new truck. And in addition, um, there are a number of administrative salaries that were added within the fire district that they be uh, included uh, with that as well. Um, obviously, these uh, uh, new buildings are creating a, a significant exposure uh, that are going you know, to require a lot, of, a lot of this equipment. And I would suggest that the, the monies be uh, put forward uh, from, from there. Council President, if I could, the commissioners of the Woodbridge Fire District have already reached out to us and had several conversations along those lines. We have indicated a willingness to help them. It cannot be for salaries. It can be for capital, and we will work up a plan to present it to the council in the new year. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, also, uh, you know, I, I, again, I would ask on that subject, I would ask for those items to be, to be fully funded by the pilot program since... Uh, well, the request needs to come from the commissioners, not not random citizens. It needs to come from the commissioners. So um, that's the only way that the money can get there. A, a citizen can't make the recommendation? We'd have to work with the commissioners who have to make the request of us, and then we will respond to that. That's the way we, we've been doing it for 15 years with all the fire districts and with the uh, school district. Great. I mean, it's good to have a good working relationship. Uh, again, it was just a, an idea following up on what I brought the last time. Um, the second question related to the fire district is the <coughs> town received um, CARES Act money. Did any of that money go to the Woodbridge Fire District? Um, so is CARES Act specifically? Yes. Yeah, they, they, there's a percentage that they got. It went to all the first responders, including first. Okay. Sorry. Um, has the fire district or anyone made any addition? request for any additional funds from that or is that, is yeah, that a federal our, formula? Our conversations with the fire district about additional funding will remain private. If you want to ask them what they requested, you can. We're not going to discuss what they requested of us. Okay. Were there any other requests made for funds? You can ask them. Not, not by the fire district, by anybody else? You can ask whoever you want to ask. We have confidential discussions with people about finances and we're not about to release the results of those. If they want to tell you what they asked for, they can. Well, I mean, it's, it's, it's taxpayers' money, Mayor. This is not like... Then some, ask the people some, who requested it. That's a secret, <clears throat> secret deal that can't be talked about. No one's a secret deal. Everything we do is out in public. If you'd like to know what they asked for, ask them. Thank you, I, I think. Um, and did you say that um, the uh, pilot program is prohibited to... Uh, for the money to go towards salaries? We've never sent money from the pilot program towards salaries since we've been doing this since 1999. We've only done it for capital. But it's not prohibited. You could do it. We can do anything. We just don't do it for cap for salaries. We do it for capital. Okay. Um, you know, there's some, some new salaries there that aren't in any of the other fire districts, so. Uh, but they have it within their budget, so obviously it's covered by their tax rate. Well, again, if uh, anything we can do to put additional money into the fire district, since, uh, as you explained, this, this pilot money is coming in after the fact, and so uh, since it's coming in after the fact, what I was asking at the last meeting, that the same proportion that you would get on your tax bill, that you would get you know, the same proportion, whether it be the school district or the fire district. So um, that's coming into there is creating an additional burden for us, and I would ask, uh, you know, there's... I think some more thought should be uh, given to 
either keeping the taxes the same or even reducing them. I know, Mayor, we had a discussion years ago when, when these monies were coming in from the uh, power plants down in Case, and it's a significant amount of money, and your response was, you're not going to give people money back because they'll expect it every Thank year. Thank you, Mr. Barton. These are decisions that have to be made by the fire district and the commissioners. They have a budget. They, they put their salaries in. They put their capital in. They strike their budget. We pay them their tax rate. We are not the fire district. We're the town. All those decisions should be made by the commissioners, and you need to talk to them. Any other comments this evening from the public? Good evening. Well, not a good evening because um, your proud Woodbridge Indians is outside. Proud boys with proud boy masks and proud boys gear on that this town refused to condemn. It's disgusting. Absolutely immoral. Inhumane. Yelling out there with racial slurs that, sh that comes here over and over again. <coughs> that you don't condemn publicly that you don't remedy. And you sit there and you ignore the community who is hurting and suffering the most. And you don't do a damn thing about it. And you laugh at the pain. You laugh at the trauma. Out there talking about we proud Americans, throwing up the hate signs and every damn thing. Look at it. Get it on film. Proud boys. That's what they are. And yet, you do not want to hear what we have to say. You don't want to condemn because you're afraid of not getting reelected. That's your big thing, Mr. Mayor. The same one who said Black Lives Matter was awful. Oh, I can't publicly condemn white supremacy in my town because I won't get reelected. We have to treat this damn thing with the emergency and urgentness as it is. Call it out on Front Street. White supremacy is alive in Woodbridge, New Jersey. White nationalism is alive in Woodbridge, New Jersey. And I condemn it. Sit there and laugh. I condemn it. Because black and brown people will never feel safe going through this city, being wrongly pulled over unlawfully arrested, and you sit there and ignore people. But yet they can come in here with hate gear and symbols and throw the damn signs up outside like they were doing. And you look at us like we got damn five heads. And you don't do nothing about it. Nothing. Resign. Submit your resignation. You don't give a damn. You're not in love with justice. You're not in love with telling the truth. You're not in love with doing the right thing. You're in love with publicity. You're in love with self. And it shows. It shows. You're not going to condemn white supremacy because many of you are white supremacists. You're not going to do it. And you sit there and laugh while my people are being murdered right now. But that's a joke to people like you. Because your privilege protect, protects you. Mine don't. Abolish white supremacy. Abolish white nationalism. Black Lives Matter. It's not just a statement. It's not just a slogan. It's real life. Because my people are being harshly punished and murdered at a higher disproportionate rate than you'll ever imagine. Than you'll ever experience. Any other comments this evening from the public? <clears throat> Hi, Anjali Walters, uh, Woodbridge. I don't ever come here to talk <laughs> to you guys, and I always end up doing it. Um, so I got a little, always pretty peaceful when I come. I got a little upset. Um, 
just because these gentlemen were saying that they're not a hate group. They're not a hate group. They just don't want the blacks to feel like, you know, they can get things handed to them. They want to keep socialism for taking their country. They don't want, what was it? You don't want white people to feel guilty for the hundreds of years of slavery that actually happened. They don't want the truth to be taught in schools. You guys are ignorant and disgusting. And I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. And I can apologize for slavery and I can apologize for your racism, but until you get it together and pull your heads out of your ass, this country is never going to stop this endless cycle of hate. And it's disgusting. And you come here to intimidate people and try to keep us from telling our children the truth, to tell our lawmakers that what are you going to do? You're going to take your country back? You're not racist, but there's a lot of similarities between your rhetoric and hate groups that have historically terrorized people of color for hundreds of years. You can look through the archives and see people being hung, slaughtered, drugged out of their house with their children and murdered. We're going to act like this stuff isn't still happening? What happened in Charlotte? What still happens? We got kids hanging in trees in Newark? It doesn't fucking happen. Excuse my oh, French, I'm oh, so oh. sorry. I apologize, I take it back. It doesn't happen, you're not racist. But you're not trying to fix the problem either. Because burying the truth in our history books, ex acting like white racism didn't play a part in what's happening in our society, pretending like we can just move forward. If you have been harmed by something, if someone hits you with their vehicle, you're going to sue, right? You want reparations. You want some type of repair. That never happened for the black community. It never happened. They're not asking for handouts. They're asking for what they need to get better, OK? And many of them, even without that, are doing better than you guys because it shows the resilience of that community. And that makes you sick. It makes you sick. And you think you have to grip onto your hatred so you can keep a hold of your privilege and your country. Well, newsflash, we all have to live here. So just stop it. And we're just asking our leaders in our community to take a stand because our children have to see this. And they're looking into this. They're storming the capitals. They're, they're intimidating people. Like, we can't just sit out here and sing kumbaya and hope that this stuff goes away because the KKK and the Nazis and all those people, they didn't go away because people was peace, love, and happiness. That's not what makes this stuff stop. You have to take a firm stance against it. So I know some of our friends get a little passionate and it pisses a lot of you off because sometimes we have to be cracked open for our raw emotions to come out, for us to realize our own privilege. Nobody wants to be called racist. Nobody wants to be exposed for the things that they are letting happen because they don't say anything. We don't say anything because it doesn't affect us as much as white people. But if you really take a look and you say, wow, this is happening to other people and I have the ability to make a difference. I can do something about it. I can use my voice and stand up against other white people who aren't going to listen to them, but maybe they'll listen to me. I rebuke your crap on behalf of white people and Woodbridge. If nobody else will tell you, I rebuke you. And I hope that we teach the accurate history, and I hope that we make reparations for the people that have been harmed, for the people that need to be made whole again, because our country and our community and our racism and our nonsense have torn families apart. And I hope we fix that as a country, as a community, as a group of white people. I hope we can say, I'm sorry, we'll do better. That's it, thank you. Bill Neeble, Seymour, New Jersey. Um, I have questions on the uh, redevelopment zone. Is there a list of available that's available that uh, has all the properties or redevelopment areas in this township now that's going to go through the process? I don't think there's an actual list, no. There isn't one? No. Okay. Uh, 
So there's no, is there a current list of the ones that we have been processed now that we're going like the one at Penn Valve? There's no list. You can request the Penn Valve plan if you'd like, but there's no list of plans anywhere. But the tax map should reflect it, correct? No. Oh, no, the tax max on the Okay, I didn't see that. No. All right. And by the way, I just want to say something in response to all this commotion here tonight. I've been here, I live in Seward C- C- almost 60 years of my life, okay? This is probably the best town around as far as racial relations. We've never had a problem here. You know, these people talk every week about our, you know, their racist attitudes, in my, in my opinion. You know, black lives matter. Yeah, all lives matter, not just yours. And you can do what you want. I mean, you know, I just don't, every time I come to a meeting, I got to hear this crap. I mean, listen, you got your opinion, this is America. We all have an opinion, okay? You just don't have the right to everybody's opinion. Give it to them. Thank you. Are there any other comments to say from the public? Sorry. Good evening, folks. I'm a member of the Proud Boys National Men's Club. Sir, a could you, of, sir, your name, please? Uh, my name is Bert. I'm a member of the National Men's Club called Proud Boys and a member of the Proud Boys chapter that was present at the meeting, which apparently frightened some people um, and made them feel unsafe. We listened to the town council meeting several days later on YouTube as we were slandered and accused of overt racism and intimidation when we did nothing but attend and sit silently to listen. The reason we were there was not to intimidate or scare people, but because we are men in this community with children in the school system, tax money in the school system, in the city, state, we are small business owners and workers in this community, and we have a right to attend these meetings as citizens of this community because we have skin in this game. We are tired of being accused of white supremacy and racism when our group is beyond diverse of every color, religion, sexual orientation, and we are tired of being accused of intimidation when Black Lives Matter organization has claimed responsibility for hundreds of millions of dollars worth of city destruction, dozens of deaths, the intimidation of regular citizens through violence, and the misuse of funds that are laundered to a small number of old white men using that organization for their own personal gain. We've held the same 12 tenants since the inception of our club in 2016, and anti-racism has always been one of the 12, and will continue to remain to do so no matter what mainstream news organizations who lie for a living decide to defame us and other patriot groups with. We do not discriminate with members and non-members, and we are tired of being accused of doing so. We will continue to show up to these school board meetings and stand with each other in our club colors to make the statement that we will not have our children fed sexual degeneracy and the rewriting of history along with racial guilt just for being born a certain color. As a member of the gay community myself, I can tell you firsthand that polluting young minds with gender bending, drag queen story hour, all that overt trans garbage will have a long lasting effect on society that is neither positive nor sustainable and the silent majority of the gay community would agree that pushing this stuff on children is an outrage. You do not need to shove perversion down children's throats to raise them with an attitude of kindness and tolerance toward others who are different. Anyone who pretends this content isn't included in CRT and DEI curriculums is either ignorant or lying. We have read the books, watched the videos, and seen the homework. <coughs> and these proud boys and patriots have stood in the streets against violent groups who seek to harm innocent civilians, and we stand for the constitutional rights for all citizens of all colors in this country as we always have. But we will not stand by while our intentions are twisted and lied about by an organization who refuses to reflect or address the problems of violence in its own community, but bullies and coerces others to bend the knee to a corrupt organization. We do not support Black Lives Matter as an organization, not because we do not love black people, but because we despise the havoc that the organization has inflicted in our communities nationally and globally. We will not watch as Black Lives Matter, the organization exploits police shootings to push separation and segregation of this country's citizens, driving us further apart as Americans, while an overreaching government makes calculated moves to strip all citizens of all colors and creeds of their freedoms little by little. We will not pretend that Black Lives Matter as an organization is a guiltless charity meant to only do good when their actions over the years have proven otherwise. We as Proud Boys have a duty to defend our communities against repressive government, violence against the innocent, and the pollution of our children's minds. And we have a right to show up to these when these decisions are being discussed because we work here and live here, we send our children to these schools, and we pay taxes to do so. 
and we will continue to show up until the powers that be actually start to listen to each and every regular citizen who is sick and tired of being labeled a bigot because they do not want our culture and decency to erode with every sick, invasive, leftist, ideological platitude. In closing, CRT and DEI are based in lies, hatred, and degeneracy, and the public is tired of it being pushed on young minds, as you'll notice all over the country in school board meetings. And if it is Black Lives Matter that approves of labeling these parents as racist or bigots and smiles as they are dragged out of these meetings in handcuffs, then it is Black Lives Matter as an organization who is repressive, Marxist, un-American, and has no place in our society. And the Proud Boys will be happy to defend innocent black families from the violence and vitriol from forceful government and the scare tactics used by BLM on their own community for years. Thank you. Sir. Sir. Sir, sit, not you. Sir, could you have, you sir, could you just please sit until the next speaker goes? Thank you. And for the rest of the speakers too. Amber Jarrett, Woodbridge Proper. Um, there's so much about that, but I'm not here to talk to Bert. I'm just curious, President Small, why the rules of this meeting don't apply to all people speaking? Because Bert didn't give us his residence. You they, quickly cut off anybody else who doesn't uh, tell us where he lives. You are wrong. Did, and did he doesn't Bert? have he does not have uh, isn't we it asked, give your name we and, asked okay. your name and well you didn't ask Bert I did so I asked you, Bert. you asked Bert his name and he said Bert but you didn't he didn't give residence. okay Mr. Jarrett you're okay. wasting your five minutes I'm just I'm just curious yeah. why yeah. the rules only okay. apply to certain like when the mayor uh, interrupts a citizen are you, excuse me when a mayor interrupts are you filming <laughs> no are you filming okay I didn't see your camera sorry Go ahead, Ms. Jarrett. Well, I'm just curious because I was shouted at and called a racist while I was speaking one day, and that person was not removed. They left on their own. Mr. Dabrowski's been removed multiple times for you for shouting out like this. The mayor himself broke decorum and shouted at somebody that it wasn't true, even though he, in fact, was lying. So I'm just curious how we decide who the rules apply to in these meetings. Is it just people we agree with? Our friends? I don't know. Go on, Ms. Jarrett. I'm just asking. That's, all. That's my I, only question on, for you. Go on, Ms. Jarrett. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Excuse me. You don't Excuse me. Mr. Dombrowski. No answer to how you decide how to apply the rules? No, I have okay. no answer for you, Mr. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments this evening from the public? Hello, my name's Kyle. Uh, I live in Woodbridge, a couple streets down. Uh, just to say about this whole Proud Boys thing, they are objectively a bigoted terrorist organization. Uh, they're, responsible for, they're responsible for organizing a lot of uh, January 6th. Uh, for them to come in clothes like this would be akin to coming in clan robes. Um, and it's really weird that Bert, a member of the gay community, uh, comes up and says degeneracy in regards to trans people when for decades gay people had the same thing said to them, and that was hate speech. And he comes up here and says, we're not bigots, we're not hateful, and then literally says that trans people are degenerate and will destroy their kids and all this other stuff. You uh, spoke, sir. One more thing, you're out. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you can look up anything about the Proud Boys. Uh, we know that these people stand for violence. They're a cry bully organization that likes to pretend that they're trying to defend people, but every time they show up, fights start, people get shot every single time. Um, them saying that Black Lives Matter, uh, one, the organization and the movement are two different things. Uh, the movement came out first, the organization came in, named themselves Black Lives Matter, which I think was a very bad idea, very stupid. But for them to say that this is some sort of like laundering scheme for old white men is a conspiracy theory and just completely foolish. Um, I don't know why you would even allow these kind of people in here. Uh, they know what they're doing and they know they come in uniform and they cover their faces because, well, they know that they support terrorism. They support terrorism. Um, they come up with all this stuff about like Marxism and leftists destroying America when, I'm sorry, but your America is not the America most people want. And that's just truth in a democratic sense. And that's why the Proud Boys led an insurrection on Jan 6 to try and stop a new president from coming in. 
So the fact that these people can just sit here and act like, oh, we're just concerned about the community. We're concerned that drag queens are going to infect our kids with CRT, which is, which is a boogeyman. A complete boogeyman. It's supposed to be, it's something that's taught in law schools. What they're talking about is teaching that um, uh, America was built on slavery and the slavery of black people, a lot of racism and a lot of genocide. And they don't like that because it makes white people look bad and it makes the country look bad. And I'm sorry, that's just the fact of the matter. So that's it. Evening. Oh, good evening, James Dabrowski, Group of Proper. I, I do not know where to begin. Um, this is a this is a hate group. You go to SouthernPovertyLawCenter.org. This is a hate group. Canadian government terrorist group. They're in Woodbridge Township. You, this is not okay. We need you. We don't agree on a lot. We need you, our elected officials, to take a stand and say, hate has no home here. I yield the remainder of my time. Please, somebody up there, make it clear to our Woodbridge residents that hate is not welcome in Woodbridge Township. Please, Council President Small, Mayor McCormick, anybody. Please. Council President Small, please. This is the Proud Boys in our, in our council meeting. This is beyond MAGA hats. This is the Proud Boys. Stand back and stand by. And they did. And on January 6th, they were there <clears throat> trying to overthrow our democracy. Now, let one of you, one of you have a spine and say, this is not OK in Woodbridge Township. Is this, is this really happening? Council President Paul, you're going to sit there. You're going to sit there? <clears throat> mayor McCormick, anything our mayor would like to say to a terrorist hate group, <coughs> terrorist organization in our community? Mayor McCormick, please. Listen, we don't agree on a lot, I know that. Can we put that aside for a second and just realize the magnitude of the moment and say something to let your community's members know that this is not okay? What do our Woodbridge High School students say in their anti-racism pledge every day? We pledge to stand against racism wherever it appears. It's good enough for our kids, but not for our elected officials. When I stormed out of here the other day, I said I'm ashamed of this town. That's not completely true. There's a lot great about Woodbridge. If there wasn't, I would have took my family out of here a long time ago. But I'm ashamed at this kind of behavior. That's what I'm ashamed of. A mayor who calls Black Lives Matter our nation's largest racial justice movement ever. Awful. Confederate flags being sold at the Walmart. No big deal. Confederate troop marching in our Veterans Day parade. The CSA, Virginia Cavalry 7th Regiment, dressed in their gray uniforms, the mayor, wave to them. Go on YouTube. Veterans Day Parade 2021, 16 minutes, 33 seconds. Watch Mayor McCormick wave to the Confederate troops. Seceded from our nation to do what? According to the guy at Walmart the other day, oh, they fought to end slavery. Yeah, that's a Woodbridge Township education. He went to Colonia High School, that gentleman. But yeah, let's keep, uh, let's keep anti-racism out of schools.
If the elected officials won't do it, we the community members will. Hate has no home here. I'll say it. We need you to say it. Our kids are watching. They used to always say that. Remember, children are watching. They're watching. They're watching you sit there and do nothing. I get freedom of speech, but hate speech has to be condemned. The late civil rights legend John Lewis said that. It has to be condemned. It can never be tolerated. I'm, ta I'm talking to a brick wall. I, I apologize to the kids of the township right now. As a 39-year-old man, we failed you. I promise you we'll do better. I promise you we'll do better. We will do better than this. Shame on all of you. Are there any other comments from the public this evening? Good evening, Tom Maris, Forge, New Jersey. I hope the mics are working. Um, yeah, that was quite a tirade. I guess I didn't make the meeting last time. I know my name was mentioned by Mr. Dombrowski, and I'm going to speak to that. But I also want to speak to the fact that the meeting before, um, the mayor said he was going to go out and buy a lottery ticket, so I'm just curious if he didn't, if we won or not, because I said I'd go um, have these with him. I did. I didn't win. I'm sorry, you didn't. <laughs> but uh, all joking aside, um, I stuck up for the mayor. Um, and as Mr. Dombrowski has so quickly pointed out, there are times that have been very vehement about this council and the mayor and the administration, but not for matters like this. I grew up in this town. I was born in Newark, New Jersey. I came here when I was approximately 12 years old. I've seen racism all around the world. I was actually in the Plainfield riots. I was in the riots in New York. I saw it when I discussed it. As a young Marine, I was stationed in Memphis, Tennessee. I saw segregation down there, segregated restrooms, buses, dining <coughs> facilities, and it sickened me because I was training with men who were of color, who might be dying alongside of me or I alongside of them had we gone to war. And I listened to these people, and they're, they're young, ignorant ideologists. Black Lives Matter, of course they do. I will say Black Lives Matter. I'll say all lives matter. And nobody should be forced into it. But they use this as a crutch, because they want you to say Black Lives Matter. Well, let's talk about the organization, because really that's what they're talking about. And that's where the mayor, I think, I wasn't there to hear it, but if he was referring to that being a disgusting organization, I absolutely agree, because they represent nothing that's good about this country. They want to create more racial divide, tear us apart, and they just keep pushing their false narratives. And I salute every one of you for sitting there and listening to the diatribe that they put forward. I've heard stuff like this long, long before Mr. Dombrowski figured out the stuff he was pulling out of his diapers wasn't play Plato. And I'm sure it just persists with him today. Because I hear him speaking to the kids. And he, you know, he turns around and he said, I'm bad because I wore a shirt and it said, Blue Lives Matter. And he conflated it with Black Lives Matter. There's a world of difference. Black lives are human beings. Blue Lives Matter is an organization comprised of men and women who go out every day, put a uniform on, and defend them, defend you, defend me, to make sure that we remain a civilization without riots, without going around. And as far as these men coming, <coughs> I did not invite them, but I would gladly, I would invite anybody. I'd invite Black Lives Matter to come to this organization or any organization to speak their piece let the public know who they are, what they're about, and then demonstrate who they truly are. I have seen them twice at school board meetings. On neither occasion did they create any problem. They said nothing. They did nothing. They held no demonstrations. And they should be as welcome to be here as you, me, or the people from Black Lives Matter. Thank you for what you do. I think we are a very good community. What happens in other parts of this country is on, on sometimes very regrettable. But we have no direct control over that. But we do have control over this town. This is a good town. I've never seen racism in this town. And I don't expect to, except for what they bring to it. Thank you. Any other comments this evening? Uh,
Java, Java Tariq Woodbridge proper. On the way to the meeting tonight, I woke up the stairs, and there was Jimmy Borowski. Asked me, what do I think about the Proud Boys? I said, they have a rights too. And he sponsors to my U.S. supremacists. I woke by the man in the yellow shirt over here. He says, F you. I said, with what? And he wouldn't look at me. You guys are barking the wrong tree. I'm probably the only person in this room. We talk about slavery. 1579, I found out five years ago, my grandfather was a slave in Europe at the Ottoman Empire. So don't talk about slavery. But what you're doing now, you're doing the wrong thing. You're not going to win people on your side by doing what you're doing tonight. You teach your kids the way you want to teach them, I teach my kids, we teach our kids the way we want to teach them. Let's see who's going to win it. But don't do it. Those people I met them two or three times, they have a rights too. They didn't just start yesterday. They didn't start from January 6th. They'll be here four years ago, five years ago. So don't rock the boat. You're in the wrong place to do this. <coughs> I guess as long as I know, as much as I know, majority always going to win. But again, don't start disturbing between us people. I've been 50 years in this town, 50 years. We have never had this problem. Unfortunately, we probably since messed up those apartments, that's what's happening. But people live together. I live on Fulton Street. There was a Spanish, black people, they spoke Hungarian. They grew up in this town. Yes, we joke against each other. Poor Polacks, Polacks and Hungarian Sankis and this and that. But that, that's not hate, that's not prejudice. Leave us alone. Let people mend that we will mend. We live together. But give us the time. Only problem I see, we got a big amount of people coming. I don't care what color, what religion, what race. Too much at one time. It takes time for people to mend. But we're afraid of each other. We're all afraid of our neighbors. We don't know our neighbors. People do to the neighbors for weeks and years sometimes because they're afraid who they are, what they are. But give them a time, time. But don't start this because we've got other problems coming to our ways. But we all got our rights so far. Mayor's got his rights, council got their rights. Don't push on us because it's not going to work. I don't want to much time. But last uh, meeting at the, uh, I believe it was an issue about the homeless people in the town, which I'm very concerned because, uh, sort of speaking, I was myself after World War II. I know what homeless people means, what it is. And Mr. Ricardo said, Mr. Ricardo said, when the son is homeless, you do send him to a town boy. Uh, because uh, I understand, he said, they do such a good job, YMCA, because they do such a good job in, in, in uh, Woodbridge does, and that's why you send them over there. Uh, Councilman Fakara, years ago back, we had a YMCA, it's a community center. If they do such a good job, why did we, what you call, uh, kick them out? That's my question. And the second thing would be, did they do it because it's cheaper, or they do a better job? But again, please, holidays are coming. We know there's a lot of people that needs. See if we can do a little bit extra for them. Uh, they're just pushing some place, you do it, you do it. If you can't, we do it. I mean, look at what happened in the rest of the country. We are humans, all the lives matter. We help each other. And the probably the only thing gets between us, either is religion or politics. Maybe that's why we don't get so close because one works one or the other. But again, see if you can do something for our people in need. I don't care who they are, what they are, as long as people need, please help them in all the cities that can do it. Again, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public this evening? Here are no other comments. <clears throat> Good evening, Mike Zampa, Colonia, New Jersey. Um, I just have a question about one of the resolutions, 65, to provide additional engineers for services to the township. Is that for a specific project, or is this like general maintenance activities? Mr. Simulukans? 
Number 65? Yeah, we, yeah. Keep, we keep a pool of engineers that we qualify, and then when we need an engineer, we go and get individual quotes from the ones we select from the pool, depending on their area of expertise. So all we're doing here is adding engineers to that pool to give us more options to select from. Understood. Um, another, I guess, general question. These minutes used to be available on the council website ahead of the meetings. Is that no longer the practice, or are they available somewhere else now? Mr. Mitch? They're on the website. Okay. They move like where they are, maybe? I will double check right. tomorrow, but they should be up there. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other comments from the public this evening? Sorry, you spoke already. Sorry, sorry, you spoke already. You can want to come up after the meeting and ask us. You're more than welcome. Any other comments? Here, another comment. Can I get a motion that the public comment portion be closed? Motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. To the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Mitch. Uh, number 17 my, on my agenda. I'd just like to thank everybody that came out for the light parade, all the participants. Uh, all the organizations that came out. It was a very successful night. I want to thank uh, Mr. Mitch for all the uh, hard work and effort he put into the uh, light parade. I also want to thank every organization, every person in this room, every person in the township that did something to um, either collect Christmas presents, collect presents, collect gifts, get food for the hunger. Uh, there's a lot of people that do a lot of great things in this community. I just want to thank them for everything they do for every one of our residents in need. I want to thank the uh, police department, our fire departments, our EMS, all our township employees, public works. Wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Vice President Bauer. Thank you, Council President. My agenda's in order. And of course, like to, it's been an honor to be your Vice President this year. I'd like to thank you for your guidance and leadership, not only here on a dais, but also within the community you serve. Uh, to my fellow councilmates, uh, the administration, mayor, all our directors, thank you for all all your assistance with my projects in the second ward and any issues I had. Uh, also, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and a happy new year. And God bless all our first responders and all our centrals that do a great job every day out here in our community. Thank you, Council President. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilwoman DeJesus. Thank you, Council President. Um, like Council Vice President Bauer said, thank you for your leadership this year. Um, both of you did a great job. I appreciate the work that you do. And I'll echo your sentiment saying that there are so many people within our community who go far and beyond for the needs of those in our community. Unfortunately, we are living in times where there are a lot of families, especially a lot of kids in need. And I am proud to say that each and every one of you guys sitting up here with me, um, the administration and all of our departments really work well together in providing the needs that our residents have. And I'm saying that my agenda is in order, um, but I have one announcement. The Hematology and Oncology Care in Center in Woodbridge made a very large donation of almost 100 coats, which were distributed to elementary school students throughout Woodbridge. And we just want to say thank you for your donation. I would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a prosperous and healthy new year. Quiero desearles a todos unas felices Navidades, un prospero año nuevo, lleno de salud y de mucho amor. Thank you. Councilman Spiller. Thank you, Council President Small. Two quick uh, agenda items. Number one, uh, I just want to thank uh, first my co chair, Mr. Mitch, for our Avenel's very merry holiday lighting. We lit the Christmas tree and the menorah. Uh, talking to Mr. Mitch, I think this was probably the most attended one uh, since it's our fourth one since we did it. Uh, weather was great. Um, I want to thank our committee, uh, the, re the residents that came out, the vendors, the sponsors. Um, it was just a really nice evening, so thank you. Uh, I'm number five. Uh, I want to thank and, uh, and the students at Avenel Middle for the Avenel Middle School Community Service Club and the National Junior Honor Society. They had their annual day of giving uh, last week. <clears throat> they made presentations to the domestic violence response team, animal shelter, children's hospital, um, toys for the children's hospital, uh, toys for tots, uh, and the local NAACP chapter. Uh, I think I got everybody. Um, but it's always one of the best, one of my favorite events to attend, especially there, because they just, they work so hard. The rest of my agenda is in order. Um, Council President Small, it's been an honor to serve with you as you being Council President. Um, you said right in the very beginning, uh, you're willing to have an open dialogue with, every, with anyone, and you have. Um, it is a honor and a privilege not only to work with you here, but on a daily basis uh, as part of uh, the emergency services. 
you're not a friend of your family, so congratulations again, and pleasure working with you, Council Vice President Bauer. Just like to say uh, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah, uh, that just passed. Um, whatever you might celebrate, celebrate it well. Uh, here's to a happy, healthy New Year, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Meehan. Thank you. Um, I just want to, my agenda is in order. I just want to thank everybody that over the past couple of weeks, uh, myself, the Woodbridge Police Department, Community Affairs, um, the uh, Billiards Club, the Woodbridge Billiards Club, the Fire Department have all really come together and they have donated money, they have donated toys. We have probably over 170 children just in Woodbridge Township that we're going to be able to take care of this upcoming s this Saturday. Um, and the families are still coming in. So it's just a joint effort from this community that we're able to take care of each other here. And I just want to thank everybody that has done so much for us. And like we always say with the police department, they, you know, you watch us when you're on duty, you watch us when you volunteer and you really do so much for our community. So thank you for that. And council, council president, you've done a great job this year. Yours is not an easy job. And You've been a pleasure to work with, and I just want to wish everybody a happy, healthy Christmas, holiday, and a peace-filled New Year. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilman Anderson. I'm sorry, Councilman Anderson. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. Um, I want to congratulate you on a, uh, a year of leadership. It's never easy being in that seat. Um, uh, I think everyone here, with the exception of uh, Councilman Bauer, have uh, sat in that seat, and, and, and Councilman Patel. Um, uh, it's never easy, and um, I, I, you served with distinction. Um, uh, to all of my councilmates, I've seen your work over the last uh, month, uh, collecting and distributing, uh, whether it be clothes, food, um, uh, pre preparation for the holidays with gifts for the families that are in need. Um, I would like to acknowledge my organization, the Woodbridge Organization of Neighbors Advocating Change. <coughs> Um, they have uh, really stepped up at this time of the year and um, adopted uh, Ross Street School and uh, delivered uh, a number of gift cards, uh, many uh, bags and, and clothing for the families that are going to be in need this year. Um, I myself received a few phone calls, but uh, I know that uh, you all um, do this as well and receive a lot of phone calls and do your work as also. I uh, want to thank all the first responders um, during the uh, during the holiday season. Uh, it's never easy to be away from your family during that time. And I want to wish everyone a healthy and happy New Year and uh, a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Councilman Carroll. Thank you, Council President. And again, thank you for your leadership. I'd like to join in with everyone. You did a wonderful job, and I look forward to continuing working with you. Uh, just a couple of quick announcements over at the community center and the club during the uh, holiday season when the students are off of school. There's tons of activities going on for the kids. Uh, I would just say to check out their website at njwcc.com for the Woodbridge Community Center and the club.org <coughs> for the club at Woodbridge. Uh, just a real quick update on the uh, COVID vaccine clinics. Uh, COVID vaccine booster shots, the third dose, are now available for Pfizer, Biotech, Moderma. Uh, for 16-year-olds for and older, that's the, um, the third dose, as long as they have the first two dose more than two months ago. Um, upcoming clinics, Tuesday, December 21st from 3 to 6 p.m. is for adults 12 and older. And on Tuesday, the 28th from 4 to 6 p.m., at the health centers for children 5 to 11 only. They're having separate <coughs> clinics for the children. Any questions, you can please reach out, go on our website and get over to the health center and they have a wealth of information when it comes down to uh, COVID vaccines. That's all I have, Council President. Happy holidays to everyone and a happy and healthy new year. Thank you. Councilman Patel. Uh, thank you, Council President. Uh, I'd like to also congratulate and thank to, thanks to you and our Council Vice President uh, Bauer, uh, for your help and support for the past 12 months. I think you had a really great, uh, I would say, the whole year. Uh, I would like to also thank our mayor, the administration, and uh, all those director, you know, directors sitting out there for supporting my agenda for the past 12 months as well. So thank you all. I have one announcement. Uh, Oak Fish Senior Center, which is located at 571 to 27 in Islin. <laughs> they are holding tomorrow uh, lunch. It's uh, 
It's called Festi Fiesta Lunch. And you know, it's a first great, I think, holiday lunch they're doing it. I would like to thank uh, the center's uh, coordinator, Bhumi Kapital, also our director, Mission Morgan, and our mayor for hosting such <coughs> a great you know, luncheon there at the center. Uh, besides that, I would like to wish you all happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to you all. That's all for you. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Councilwoman Drum, she asked me to uh, wish everybody healthy and happy holidays, and uh, we keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Mr. Mitch. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple quick items. My agenda is relatively in order. Just to mention that uh, I started sharing with you that I'll be rewarding uh, doing the boundaries of rewards, so we'll be changing those within the next couple of weeks, so you're aware. Uh, also want to thank you for a good year, and look forward to working with Mr. Fowler next year. I say this once a year, because I don't know that the public knows this, but my boss changes every year, and I always report to the council president. Thank you for working together this year. Uh, the last item, uh, Councilman Spiller and I were kind of recruited a couple weeks back to join in a new effort this year, like everybody else is doing, and we hope to feed this coming weekend. We hope to deliver food baskets to uh, 26 needy families, uh, families that are in need here in Woodridge Township. So uh, I want to thank Karen Skobicki for leading that effort and for reaching out, so we'll do what we can to help her in her efforts. That's all I have. Happy holidays. Thank you. Director Hubner. Patrol signal and two traffic ordinance amendments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. Just start by the weekly refund resolutions. Thank you. Thank you. Director Brew. Thank you, Council President. Uh, I have one order for action engineering services for the intersection improvements of New Dover Road and Colonial Boulevard, and that's for Collier's Engineering Incorporated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council President. On behalf of Mayor McCormick and the administration, we'd like to thank you for your stewardship. It's never easy to sit in that chair. Um, it, it is always a difficult task, uh, and I know a lot of your colleagues on the dais can, can attest to that. So congratulations. We look forward to working with you in the future. Also, uh, on my agenda, so oh, forgive me, uh, we'd like to wish the residents and the employees of Woodbridge Township, before, along with the council, of course, elected officials, a very joyous and happy holiday season, healthy and spent with your family. Uh, on my agenda tonight, uh, for the mayor, I have appointments, and for the administration, I have a tax and sewer overpayment. Thank you, Council President. Thank you. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231 of 1975, uh, allows the exclusion of the public from a meeting in these circumstances. Uh, and I'm looking for a motion to approve the resolution <coughs> and go into executive session for about 30 minutes to discuss collective bargaining. Motion? Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. We will now go into executive session. This time, if I can ask the public to leave the room. Okay, we'll call the meeting back to order at 7 Come on in, Jeff. Okay. Uh, council, uh, before you is what I'm going to number is resolution number 75, which authorizes the mayor and the municipal clerk to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the contracts that were discussed for locals 469, 3044, and 2922. Can I get a motion to approve resolution 75? Motion. Second. Any questions or comments from council? All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Second.